Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra and welcome back to A Lovely Jaunt. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than some of my other video content that you've seen before, although I am going to be talking about the book that I've been reading. So this is my weekly check-in. I've been reading a little bit of the old curiosity shop, making some progress there. Haven't done a ton of reading this week, but that's okay. I want to share with you what I've got. And uh, we're going to do actually an art time-lapse video. So you're going to join me at the easel. On my social media, on Instagram, I think, I announced that I'm looking to change up the style of content that I make on this channel. I'm still going to talk about books, but I'd also like to bring in my love of art. I shared with you guys my book journal a couple weeks ago and you guys actually responded really, really well to that video, so that was quite the encouragement to me. But I'm really, really interested in the intersection really of all of the humanities, how they comment upon one another, and how we can continue to get a deeper insight into ourselves, into the world around us, through the humanities at large and art in general. Now, I mentioned that I'm also an oil painter, so today you guys are gonna watch me work on a couple things at the easel in oils. And I wanted to kind of give you an overview of what I'm working on. Then I'll speed up the footage. I'll do a voiceover talking about my process artistically and then also sharing with you about what I've been reading this past week. So the first thing that I'm gonna work on is I have this small, um, canvas panel that I've been doing. This is a bridge in Germany, which I've been working on. And I just have a few pieces, like touch-ups to do. I need to do sort of like make this look three-dimensional and bring in like the interior edge of the um, bridge that you would be able to see. And then I also need to push this back um, in the perspective. I'm gonna use atmospheric perspective to do that. That's basically what that means. So I'm gonna make these colors more dull be to make it look further away. Um, I might make these colors look a little bit more dull as well to push that fo foliage back and make it look more distant. It looks really close up, like about not that far back from the bridge, but it, in the photo that I'm referencing, it's actually quite pushed back. And I will say I often use uh, royalty-free images for my references. I use a couple of different sites, Unsplash, uh, Pexels.com, Pixabay. Those are all really great resources. They're kind of places where professional photographers would put the additional shots that are still good, but maybe that they didn't use for whatever job they were working on. And then artists and other people can use them for reference photos. So you can use them on your website, stuff like that. Then I have this canvas here where I started to do, which you'll get a better sense of what is on here, um, a landscape. I just did the first layer, but I got bored of it and I'm not interested in finishing that painting. And instead, I'm gonna do a concept that I have been working out in my sketchbook. This is my sketchbook that I use the Moleskin Art Plus. I've used a wide variety of different sketchbooks at different times, but this is the artwork that I'm gonna try and do and reimagine in oils. Now, I don't often paint my feelings or if I do it's definitely unconscious and in my most recent Sherlock video which you would have seen this week I mentioned that I have been going to counseling I've been in therapy and I'm working through some areas of my life where I just need some healing and as a result I've been finding that my artwork has become a new way for me to get in touch with my emotions, which I have a hard time doing, and to express them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how this relates to my mental health and my experiences with it a little bit as well. But for now, let's get started on working at the easel and I'll finish up my little panel and then we'll probably get through the first layer of this painting um, in oils. It takes many layers to really finish an oil painting, but for today, we're gonna get like the base layer done while I talk about my mental health, some of the stuff that I'm doing in art, and also what I've been reading this week. So, uh, let's get started. All right, hi everyone. This is my first time doing a voiceover and I have no idea how this is going to go. Much like I had no idea how the footage was going to go. You will see on my second painting, it's in focus on me, but it's out of focus on the painting itself, which is a little bit disappointing, but hopefully you still enjoy the footage as we work through it. So what you're seeing me do here is actually put linseed oil on a sponge and then apply that to the canvas. And that just helps the additional layers of oil painting to glide over the surface and also to bond with the layers of paint that are below it. 
I am also going to complete the two steps that I described. You'll see me start working on the interior sort of edge of that circle. And that's basically the underside of the flat plane of what people would walk on. And from this angle, you can see it just on that right side of the bridge. And then I'm also going to be mixing up some duller colors to go uh, into that tree background. And like I said earlier in the video, basically I'm trying to create a sense of distance between the, that foliage and the trees in the background and the, um, the bridge in the foreground. So lately I have been reading the old curiosity shop and one thing that it really surprised me it, from the last time I checked in with you guys about my reading is how old Nellie is. The way she behaves and the way that she just described in the first three chapters, I thought we were dealing with a girl who's like six years old. She's actually a teenager, a young woman. And I think that really speaks to both the way she's portrayed as being innocent, but also the way in which she is extremely passive. And in fact, I find it a little bit annoying in the story so far. She doesn't think for herself, especially regarding Kit. We know that a bad opinion of Kit has been sown in the mind of her grandfather, and she is incapable of really thinking and acting for herself. Even when they're getting to the point where they're ready to run away, they're trying to get outside of the power of those people who are trying to take advantage of her grandfather. Even then, it's initiated and really uh, by her grandfather. She puts it into actions. She's certainly not passive to the point of like he's doing all of the work, but she would never try to get her grandfather to go along with a plan of her own. And that's a little bit annoying for me to read. But the hope is, of course, that she grows as a character before the end of the story. Kit fighting for the bird is obviously a symbol of his fight for Nelly. Um, and Kit is such a gem. It's just really, he's really, really a touching character, I think. Nelly and her grandfather are now at the point where they're sort of, they're vagabonds, they're travelers, and they're making their way through the world. They meet people who are kind to them along the way. And ultimately they fall in with a group of sort of traveling entertainers. But soon, the other shoe is going to drop and they are going to need, you know, to get gainful employment, to find some sort of consistent source of charity, if not that. And yeah, so that's kind of where I'm left off in this book. That's about as far as I've made it. And so we're just going to have to see how their journey progresses and how they figure out how to deal with their poverty. The other book that I have been reading right now is actually a YA fantasy book that I checked out from my library via a digital download. I am a huge fan of the Libby app. And the title of the book is The Queen's Rising, and it is by Rebecca Ross. I'm a little bit over halfway through this book, but I'm probably not going to finish it because I just find it a little bit boring and a little bit too easy. The premise of this book is that this young woman uh, who is our main character is an illegitimate child. We don't really know who her father is, but we do know that he is not from the kingdom in which she lives, which is where her mother is from, but from the neighboring kingdom, which is currently under a tyrant. She is sent to basically a training school to learn special skills and she begins to sort of uncover her past through a magical and mysterious connection through uh, that she sort of like recovers the memories of her ancestor. When she tells her headmistress about this, it's she just happens to know the exact right people to be to connect her with who are basically the leaders of this rebellious faction that are trying to put the true queen back on the throne. And it's all just a little bit too easy. So I'm really bored. Um, there's a romantic plot with her former tutor. I suspect that he's going to be have a secret reveal. We have a character who really should be involved, who isn't involved. And I'm like, is it because it's him? Maybe it's not. Don't tell me. I don't care. Um, but yeah, this book is extraordinarily mediocre and so mediocre that I find it like really really annoying for you know there's nothing horrible about the writing there's nothing horrible about the plotting it's not horrendously problematic or whatever it's just so 
meh. So strong meh on that. We will not be completing that story. So I wanted to also tell you a little bit about this painting that you're now seeing me do with. So one of the things that I have been working through in and through my therapy is coming to terms with my feelings of being disconnected from my own emotions. Now, the, the background of why I am the, the way that I am is probably not important and it involves you know, other people's story as well, which it's not my right to share. But I do have a really hard time being connected with my emotions and this painting is a way for me to express what that feeling is. And so obviously we have the skull depicted, it's with a cracked head open and with clouds floating through it. And there's a real sense of being diffuse, disconnected, almost like sea foam just floating on the surface of the sea. One of the stories that I've always really connected to is Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. And at the end of that story, she, you know, becomes sea phone and she just floats away on the top of the sea. And it's like, that's how I feel inside my head sometimes when I'm feeling really disconnected from who I am on my deepest self. So that's what that painting is all about. Hopefully I'll be able to show you additional process footage on it as we refine the painting and bring it to completion. But until next time, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile, but I'm also an artophile. What's the word for that? All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.